and thanks for having me. I am Henrik Walter Johnson. I am the um, Vice President of the European Federation of Translators. I'm board member and industry liaison of the European Federation for Audiovisual Translators Associations. And I'm the deputy chairman of the Norwegian Association for Audiovisual Translators. I am here to talk about subtitling guidelines. The subtitling tradition dates back to 1960 in Norway. That's when the Norwegian public channel NRK started um, their first uh, television broadcasts. They had already existed as a, as a radio broadcaster for some years, uh, but the TV uh, started in 1960. Since then, and up until now, uh, we've basically had uh, a really good run with subtitles. Uh, the average Norwegian reads the equivalent of 17 books worth of subtitles every year. That's a lot of subtitles. Uh, Norwegians expect subtitles and they like subtitles and they want subtitles uh, on international content. Um, and uh, this was a, a very successful um, venture for, for Norwegian television up until around the time of the year 2000. What happened then was that we, we had a few new players on the field. Um, certain international broadcasters started uh, broadcasting in, in Norway. Uh, mainly the Discovery Channel, uh, um, a few channels from BBC, and also the National Geographic Channel uh, entered the Norwegian market. So for us, that was wonderful. Up until then, uh, up until 1992, I think it was, we had one TV channel. Uh, from 92 onwards, we had something like two, and then maybe three or four throughout the 90s. And then suddenly, mm, now we have 15. Whoa, this is cool. Uh, the problem was, uh, in the beginning, they didn't have subtitles at all. Um, but then eventually they realized that it's probably a good idea to have subtitles um, in these countries. Uh, but what they gave us uh, was uh, subtitles that weren't very well. <laughs> they, I'm not going to say they weren't very good, uh, but I'm going to say that they didn't uh, follow the rules that we were used to uh, in this market. So um, that was a problem. Uh, the viewers uh, had subtitles that, for instance, they raced across the, the screen so they couldn't see. Uh, Norwegian viewers uh, didn't have time to read the subtitles before they disappeared and were re replaced by new ones. Um, so it was clear that something had to be done. Um, and um, the problem for us was that we didn't really have uh, an established rule book for subtitling. We had just developed a convention, a way that everybody did it, especially NRK, the, the public broadcaster, they did it in a certain way and all of the other Norwegian uh, channels follow their example. Uh, but when these international uh, channels came, they didn't follow NRK at all. They had their own way of doing it. Um, they did use local uh, language service providers, though. Um, so, for instance, at the time we had uh, a company called uh, Broadcast Text, we had SDI Media, we had BioVision. Um, local agencies knew of the Norwegian tradition, but they would typically give the client what the client asked for. And the problem was that the customer had no idea what they wanted. They just said, well, do it like this. Uh, and, uh, and, and then translators were instructed to do it the way that, uh, for instance, the uh, Discovery Channel uh, wanted it. So what can you do in a situation like that? It's, uh, it's quite um, obvious that you need to uh, sit down and talk. And uh, the Norwegian uh, Association for Audiovisual Translators decided that we should um, create a safe space where we could sit down at least once a year 
sit down and talk about things, not necessarily make any decisions or sign any agreements, just talk about things and see what comes from it. Uh, the first year we invited um, uh, all of the uh, stakeholders in the industry to come, uh, it was quite a show because they showed up with with uh, lawyers, a lot of them, and uh, it was like uh, a, a trench war uh, where nobody trusted anyone and we were all suspicious and afraid to speak. Um, but it during the course of the meeting, it turned out to be quite uh, quite a constructive conversation. Uh, and the year after when when the second uh, seminar took place, None of them had lawyers with them, and, and the tone was completely different. That's when we started getting constructive. Uh, and one of the things that came up during one of these seminars was, how about we create uh, a document of um, best practices, to use an, an EU term, uh, uh, subtitling standards for good quality uh, subtitling in this country. And they all agreed because we had a, a good tone by then. So um, I was appointed uh, project manager for this and uh, we had other members of, uh, of the uh, entire industry to come along on the project. Uh, the end clients were represented uh, by broadcasters and streaming services. We had N NR Core, uh, the public channel. We also had the um, uh, the uh, commercial broadcasters, TV2, uh, TV Norway and Discovery. Um, we had the language service providers represented by BTI Studios, uh, SDI Media and Biovision. Uh, the authorities were represented by the National Language Council, which is a branch of the government. Uh, and the practitioners, of course, which were handpicked by the translators associations. Uh, we all sat down physically in a room together around a table and we discussed what would go into these guidelines. Um, and uh, we, we looked at all of the practices, um, especially uh, BTI Studios had already written a quite extensive rule book, uh, which we looked at in the beginning. Um, but the, uh, the actual um, guidelines that were uh, produced in the end were only four pages long. Uh, and I'm sure we can provide a link for you to go in and check them out. Um, we've translated them into English and they're available um, to all. Um, and what we did was that we sat down and discussed word by word how to write these guidelines to make sure that everyone agreed on everything. Uh, and if there was something we couldn't agree on, then it didn't go into the guidelines. Um, an example of that is um, when a sentence uh, continues from one caption to the next, then how do you mark that? Like, do you put a dash? Do you put three dots? Do you put nothing? Um, like, do you, do you make the sentence just end with no punctuation? That's sending a signal. There were different ways of doing it and nobody wanted to step down. Uh, and so we couldn't agree. And so our guidelines say nothing about that. It's basically up to you how you want to do it. Um, <clears throat> when we all agreed um, and the guidelines were ready, um, they were published on the official uh, website of the National Language Councils, um, um, of, of the Norwegian uh, Language Council, the Norwegian version. And the English version is published on uh, the Norwegian Audiovisual Translators Association's website. People often ask, so now you've got guidelines, what do you do? Uh, the truth of the matter is that not that much had changed. These international end clients still came to the Norwegian market and said, well, um, we want it done this way. And the language service providers, the agencies would still say, okay, we'll just give you what you want. 
Um, and so a lot of them kept providing uh, alternative um, subtitling in Norway. So it was clear to us that it, uh, the, the, our work was not done, even though we had produced results. We needed to go out and we needed to tell people uh, that these guidelines also have to be followed. And uh, of course, the Norwegian broadcasters already uh, follow roughly uh, these, th these um, guidelines. You've got the public channel NRK, you've got the largest commercial channel TV2, you've got the oldest commercial channel uh, TV Norway, you've got TV3, which started out as a, something like a Scandinavian product uh, project that's uh, still going. And of course, now all of these uh, have uh, sister channels. Um, like for every one of those, there's probably three others now um, <clears throat> under the same umbrella. Um, but then Netflix came and HBO came and uh, we had uh, new people that we could talk to and inform them about what was going on. And one of the uh, very uh, successful things that we did was to, uh, we, we actually managed to break through the, the titanium wall of Netflix and we got them talking. And now we're having uh, regular meetings with, with Netflix. Uh, obviously that had to be put on hold during the pandemic, but we're going to uh keep it up um twice a year normally we're having uh talks with netflix uh, and we dip into the guidelines uh, all the time they do have style guides as they call them for each language that are not set in stone uh and we are sending representatives to talk about to talk to the language managers within uh netflix uh to better um have uh, have the Netflix guidelines uh, correlate better with the national guidelines of subtitling in in various of uh, Euro uh, European countries. Um, I've also reached out to the BBC, uh, who were very interested and uh, immediately instructed uh, their uh, uh, language service providers uh, that the uh, subtitling uh, for Norwegian, for instance, uh, had to follow the Norwegian guidelines for subtitling. Uh, so yes, it's, it is a success. We have managed to get all the Norwegian channels to follow it and uh, also uh, quite a few of the important international ones. Still though, not everyone does. So uh, it's, uh, we've still got some work to do. But then, uh, then again, uh, Norway is quite a comparatively small market if you you know look at France and Germany and Russia um, so uh, what happens here uh, might not have such a large effect on the world unless we go out and lead by example uh, and uh, that's what we tried to do so when we had uh, completed the Norwegian uh, subtitling guidelines I immediately went to Denmark uh, and spoke to the Danish Association and uh, encouraged them to start uh, working on similar subtitling guidelines for Denmark. And Denmark was the first country that launched um, uh, their own national uh, subtitling guidelines after us. Uh, it, it took them about a year. Uh, so. Um, uh, the, uh, the, the Danish uh, guidelines have been out for quite some time. Uh, they were immediately uh, translated into English as well. So that was really good. Um, so a lot of people know about the Danish guidelines. Uh, they're well written and they are a lot more detailed than the Norwegian ones because the Danish ones, I think, are 12 pages uh, compared to the Norwegian uh, that are four pages long. Uh, then Sweden uh, and Finland, uh, we got the Netherlands, uh, Germany, Slovenia and Croatia to launch national guidelines for subtitling now. We've also got um, similar, uh, a similar document for France, 
it was developed a long time ago, so I'm not quite sure how well it compares if it goes into the fold or not. Um, but we're looking into that. Maybe the French can be revised. Uh, there's also a British association called SATO. Uh, they have made um, guidelines for their members. It's not for the entire industry, but it's for the members uh, who, who uh, work in, in the United Kingdom. I've also traveled to Australia, to China and to Russia to encourage these countries to uh, start projects. I am the advisor for the Chinese um, uh, project. Uh, project. Um, I am uh, an, something like an advisor for the Russians as well. They haven't come as far as the other ones yet. Uh, there has been interest in Spain, there's interest in Czechia, and uh, I know that they talked about it in Poland last year at the, uh, at the uh, conference there. So a lot of things are going on with, with national guidelines for subtitling. And if your country, if, you, if you're watching from uh, a country that hasn't been mentioned right now, and you're interested in, in starting this kind of work, uh, contact me and I'll be uh, very, very interested in, in uh, helping you kickstart the, the project. So what can we say about the future of all this? Well, I've already talked about Netflix. I've already talked about um, the BBC. I've, um, I've been in touch with people from the EBU because they have uh, uh, something, oh, I can't remember right now what, what the word is, but it's, it's something like a, a standards uh, committee where they look at uh, technical standards uh, to be applied within the EBU. And EBU is, uh, I'm sure you know, it's not only Eurovision. They do that, but they also uh, coordinate and, and produce um, uh, programming for uh, the national broadcasters all over Europe. So having them on board would be really, really good. Uh, we are scheduled to talk to them. Um, there is a, a European level of uh, language councils. So most European countries have one uh, and every once in a while they get together and they meet and discuss things that are important to them. This uh, European Language Council is called EFNIL, and we are uh, talking with them about uh, going there and informing them about, about what's going on. Uh, there's uh, a new association, a, a global entertainment association called EGA, uh, which is also looking into making uh, standards for dubbing and subtitling rather more technical, I think, uh, but I'm involved with that as well. Uh, and I'm also talking to uh, MESA, which is uh, the industry um, association. Our goal is to um, get content makers and end clients uh, to talk to us so that we can explain the importance of uh, high quality audiovisual translation. Basically, if your subtitles aren't very good, people aren't going to want to watch what you have made. Uh, and that is, I mean, it happened to me just the other week. I've been looking forward to this wonderful, wonderful show from Iceland. I'm I quite like Iceland and uh, not least for the scenery. Uh, and this was, I think it was like a political crime drama. Uh, it's set in Iceland with the mountains and the fjords and everything. And I was like, mm, oh yeah, this is good. Uh, unfortunately, the subtitling was so fast that um, after having watched something like 10 minutes, uh, I had read the entire time and I hadn't seen a mountain. The mountains were on screen, but I didn't have time to look at them because I had to keep reading the subtitles all the time. Uh, and so that was unfortunate for me and for the producers of this Icelandic series because I stopped watching after 10 minutes. Instead of 10 episodes, I got 10 minutes and then I couldn't take it anymore. Uh, so um, 
good quality uh, audiovisual translation can really make or break your your production in uh, a different market. And so, what about the EU? Uh, we would like to get in touch with more people from the EU uh, and get involved with uh, what's going on. There's a lot of translation going on inside the, uh, the EU system, even audiovisual translation. So that's a good place for us to continue our work. And at that, I think I will leave it. Uh, thank you so much for having me and uh, well done. <laughs>